Hello and welcome to this bonus video on how to position and animate falloffs before R20. Now in Cinema 4D R20, the entire falloff system was replaced by the field system. And one of the benefits of the field system was that you could decouple the falloff shape from the object it was attached to. So you have a sphere field and you could move that independently of the object it was attached to. And that's not to say that you couldn't have that functionality before R20, it was just a few extra steps and those are the ones we're going to go over in this video. So let's take a look at the scene and we have an XP emitter, it's set to shot mode, uh, 10,000 particles and zero speed, so if I press play you see adds particles to the scene and nothing happens to them. Now I've got a couple of uh, other objects in the scene, I have uh, a torus, flow field and an XP speed modifier. Now if I turn the speed modifier on and I, I highlight it, you'll see that it's just simply it's adding a speed value incrementally and it's got some variation to it. But all we really need to know is that it is affecting the particles when I turn it on. And then I have this, uh, this flow field and a torus. And if I press pause, go back to the beginning, turn those both on, you'll see that the flow field is set to surface normal. I have it as a field acceleration and it's got a, a value of 10 units per second, and the strength is 100%, and then I've got the torus, and I press play, and you'll see it just pushes the particles away from the torus. Okay. Now, if I want to have falloff on these objects, and I want to animate the falloff across them, it's no problem if I want to do that with the speed, and I'll demonstrate. So if I just turn that torus off as well, go to the falloff tab, and I choose a spherical. Let's go for a spherical fall off shape. And let's hit play. And we can see that the speed modifier is affecting the particles within that fall off. So if I move that fall off, the particles within that will then animate, will then activate, I should say. I can move it around like this. I could, I could set some keyframes here. So I could set the, the first keyframe here. Let's add one there. Let's jump to frame 90 so it's all the way through. Add another keyframe and hit play, and our modifier and fall off go through and activate only the particles within the fall off. Now that's excellent. And you'll note that it doesn't matter where the speed modifier itself is in, in position because all it's doing is just adding speed to the particles. So there's no, there's no reason for the modifier, or sorry, the the XP speed modifier to be in any specific position in the scene. It doesn't have to be at world zero or anything. However, the difference is the XP flow field, obviously we have this torus. If I move our flow field away, it's no longer affecting the, the torus. Now, if I add a spherical fall off here and I press play, and then I have to move the whole flow field out of the area of influence. Now it's not too much of a problem here because obviously the flow field updates itself based on where that torus is. But imagine we're animating that torus and you've got all sorts of other things. You might want to be able to see the flow field, you know, just around the object that it's influencing. And it's kind of inefficient to have to move the whole object. So how do we decouple the sphere spherical fall off shape or any of the fall off shapes from the flow field's position itself? Well, we can do that using the offset. And if you look at the fall off tab here, down here in the shapes, when you change it to say any of these shapes, they have fall offs. So I'm just going to change it to sphere. And then I'm just going to move it around. You can see I can change the offset. And of course, I could animate this through. So I could add a keyframe just like we did with the position keyframes of the speed and push that through there. And that's nice and simple. And you could keep it like that, no problem. Excellent. But say you had a few flow fields and you had another one, maybe a random one. What if you wanted to control them all? Uh, it just becomes a little bit inefficient to have to animate each of the offsets of those objects. So, in fact, let's duplicate that flow field and just demonstrate that we can control more than one at a time. That's not just the only principle we're, we're experimenting here. So let's change this, uh, oh, let's leave it as a sphere. And let's change this to a random. And I'm just going to change it to direction. And then I'm going to turn off the vectors. And we'll just call this one random. Let's press play, make sure everything's going on. 
There we go. And you can see both flow fields are having an influence, but they're only having an influence within their fall off, which is good. But now if we want to transform and uh, offset that, it's going to be a little tricky to do if we have more than one flow field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a controller for the position of our, of our, of our fall off here. So let's add a null. So adding a null to the scene and I'm going to right click the null and I'm going to add an Espresso tag. Now this is very straightforward. What we need to do now is we need to connect up the position of this null to the offset of this fall off here. So I'm just going to do it. Let's just demonstrate it on one of them first. So let's do the flow field and I'm just going to make the, the null a child of that flow field and let's call it fall off control. And I'm going to drag that fall off control into our Espresso uh, editor here. And I'm also going to grab this flow field. And then what you can do is you can, I can grab the coordinates, the position of this fall off control by hitting the output here. And I can just grab position. Now this is a relative position and I'll explain what we might want to do with this in a bit. And I'm just going to set it to position for now. And then in the flow field, I, I need to add that offset from the fall off. And I can actually just drag parameters into the Espresso window. So I just drag that parameter. And then I just need to connect those two up. And now the position of the fall off null, this one here, so this is the position of the fall off null, is driving the offset of this XP flow field fall off offset parameter. So now, in fact, I'm going to lock this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lock this in the attributes manager. That just means that when I unselect it and I go and select the null, it still has this selected. So we'll unlock that in a minute. But if I move this, you'll see. And if you look at the position down here, that is now exactly the, the values that are being input here. And you can see our fall off follows our null. So that's nice and simple. And I can just add the keyframes like we did before with the speed mod. I go to frame 90, push it through, and there you go. So that's the, that's the basic setup of that. Now there are a couple of caveats. If you remember, I've used position, which is actually local position. And obviously local position is within an object. So if it's a child of an object, it will use this position relative to its parent object. Whereas global position, it doesn't matter where the object is in the scene, it'll always be relative to world zero. And that's the world zero axis there. So why is that an issue? Well, let's, I'm gonna drag this fall off control out of our XP flow field. I'm going to uncheck the automatic keyframing, auto keying, and I'm gonna unlock our, our attributes manager. Now, I've got the flow field here. If I press play, no problem. It works exactly the same because the flow field is at world zero. However, if I move the flow field, you'll see our fall off moves with it relative. But now that's disconnected from our null. So you'll see if I've got our null selected, it's still, it's offset and incorrect. And that's because we haven't compensated for this flow field having moved itself. So it has its own coordinates here. Now what we can do to mitigate this, and we, if we go to the global fall off, uh, sorry, the fall off control, I'm going to change the position to global. So global position, I think it's better to use global position when possible. It's more predictable. Right click optimize, there we go. And I'm going to do some maths operation, operations on the vectors before I input them into the offset value. So I actually need to negate the movement I have added to, or the transform I've added to the XP flow field. And I can do that with a math node. So I've actually got math nodes here. So you just search here in, in Expresso, you just do math, drag that in. And then the data type we are dealing with here is vectors. So we need to change that to vector. And I'll change it now. The function we're gonna do is we're gonna do a subtract. So what, I'm, what I need to do is I need to drag in our flow field again. And I need to grab the coordinates of this one. So global coordinates of our flow field. And I'm going to subtract those from our global position of our fall off null. And you'll see 
now it doesn't matter where the flow field is. Obviously, we, we this is a kind of a weird scenario where we're moving it outside of where we need it to be. So you could still transform the flow field and the null will still be in the right place and stuck to our control null. Excellent. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the basics of how to animate and transform and position your fall-offs independently of the object they're attached to in anything before R20. Now, as the one bonus thing, I've got this, uh, this random here as well. To match the, the fall-off for this one, we obviously need another setup just like this to calculate that. So what we can do is we can actually just duplicate these, these nodes here. And fall off control still goes in here, but the difference this time is we're going to replace these two flow fields here with the random one. And you can just select them both in the Expresso editor, and then you can just drag that down into the reference there. And now both, if I turn the, the other one off, this should work. Oh, it's in direction mode. So I do need to give it some speed. And there you go, you can see the random. If I turn that one off, change this to velocity, you'll see, there you go, our particles are affected as well. And as I move, if I turn them both on and I move this around, you'll see the falloffs follow, no problem. Okay, so hopefully that's been helpful and that's the way that you can position and animate falloffs before we had fields in R20. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.